From EPAWA Weather Consulting headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania, this is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 2nd. A little bit late today with the video. I'm getting uh, some Super Bowl party preparations going on, which I'm sure many of you are. Uh, so I won't make this too long here because we have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things going on. Uh, today, of course, is also, in addition to being the uh, Super Bowl, we have uh, Groundhog Day. So uh, the Groundhog did not see its shadow this morning, and uh, that signifies, apparently, that spring will come early this year well you can't really say spring will come early because it, winter never really came okay but for those of you that believe in fairy tales and that they're actual real life documentaries or the Loch Ness monster exists or that geckos can really talk in tv commercials or you know, the bachelor series isn't scripted uh you know this is this is one holiday for you you, you seem to have, a lot of people seem to believe in this I, I don't understand why i don't understand the fascination with it it's uh it's uh, once a year, and it's been going on for over 100 years. And, uh, you know, it's wrong more times than it's right. But, uh, you know, it, it's not hard to say as far as uh, Groundhog's Day is concerned that, you know, it's signifying early spring isn't such a leap of taking such a leap of faith there because this really hasn't been much of a winter thus far. And we were below average uh, in the snowfall department, as much of you, uh, many of you already know. Uh, we do have some signals going forward there. The, but the pattern here, you see a lot of reds here. The pattern here going forward is largely a milder than average one. As a matter of fact, we have February as above average, plus 3 to plus 5 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what we updated here on Friday in the long-range outlook. But you still see several storm signals. As a matter of fact, we have four listed on here in the latest one. The first one is toward the end of this week. It's going to end up being ice, it looks like. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, another one around the 11th and 12th. Uh, some models are showing that, too. This is more like an overrunning pattern we're going to get into next week between the 10th and 20th. Uh, but we do have some opportunities there, all right? And it doesn't have to be the best pattern in the world in order to get snow. Things haven't lined up so far this winter. It doesn't necessarily mean that's a precursor to what uh, is going to happen going forward, and we can't get something to thread the needle going forward just because we haven't so far yet, okay? Uh, if you remember back in uh, January 2016, we had a enormous snowstorm. And, and uh, 30, I think, I think Allentown got 31.9 inches of snow that year. The entire winter, the entire winter as a whole, total 36. Okay? So if it wasn't for that one storm, it would have been a winter just very similar to this winter where we didn't really have anything. So you can get a thread-the-needle storm, and I'm not saying of that magnitude necessarily because the, the odds of something like that unprecedented happening are very low, extremely low. Okay? But... You can have snow opportunities to thread the needle, whether that could be, you know, three, four inches of snow, it could be a foot of snow, it could be whatever. But you have opportunities that, that are that are that are going forward and you can still have an otherwise mild mild pattern to get to your uh, average February snow. Can we still get to these numbers? Yeah, I think so. I think but but the, the areas that are gonna be best chance to see that uh, occur would be northern areas. So if you're down here in uh, Philadelphia, Atlantic City, I know you really don't have anything here in Philadelphia. I think you're 0.3 inches of snow all year, and that might be uh, a little generous. So a couple coatings here and there. Uh, you're not really not looking at the best odds compared to, say, Scranton, Wilkesbury, Allentown, Harrisburg, Newark, kind of in the middle. All right, uh, but Philadelphia, Atlantic City, further south, uh, you have a less lesser of a chance of getting or, or attaining these listed numbers that are on in this chart here for February. So. We were below average in January. Uh, can't change that. That's already in the past, and uh, most areas were uh, either you know, were very far below average. Matter of fact, so it just depends. Uh, some areas got uh, you know Allentown got three inches, it's supposed to get ten, so that that's well below. Okay, Philadelphia uh, had a you know couple tenths of an inch, and you're supposed to get six point five in January. Can you still get to these numbers in February? Yes, you can. Is the pattern going to be going forward going to be, very, going to be very good to see that? Probably not, okay? Uh, and these are these looking at the exam, uh, examining the temperature period. We're going to be quite warm as we head into this week. We're going to have a, a ridge build in 
that's going to go it's going to set up a gradient pattern this is going to be very interesting because uh gradient means to see where this white is here in the middle here this is where the gradient exists okay so all the warmth is over here and all the cold is here up to the north as this gradient is moved north and south by several different factors you got storms moving along that boundary okay so you have an active storm track that you know goes along that boundary like this so if it's if the, the, if the uh, warm air is over us at that time we are uh, obviously rain anything north of that storm track up here would be snow okay so that's how that works that's how that works as far as the gradient is is uh, expected but it's going to be warm this week uh, monday tuesday wednesday will be warm this gradient though on wednesday is going to start moving off to the south okay just temporarily but that's just enough of a window to get a storm moving along that gradient and another round of precip coming in here that will be in the form of overrunning precipitation and freezing rain and that's what we're seeing at the end of the week. I'll show you that here in a second. But it's only just for the thir Wednesday night and Thursday morning time frame. That's it. Because then it goes back up well into the 50s. Everything melts. Uh, like literally that same day on Thursday. Okay. Temperatures scoot up into the 50s. You get rain come in for a second round going right into Friday. That's round two. And uh, we don't have any snow on the back end of that. Okay. But we'll have ice. Just a small window there. We'll give us some ice here. It looks like Wednesday night and Thursday. And then longer term trends as far as temperature periods. You can see where this gradient sets up. Now this is getting out closer to Valentine's Day here. Uh, but you can still see there's your gradient. So where's your storm track going to be, do you think? Right along that gradient. Okay. And if you're on the colder side of that gradient, which is still uncertain, this is going to move around a little bit. Okay. If you're on the colder side of this gradient, you can get the snow and the ice, the wintry weather. Okay. So that's the whole idea. Uh, with a gradient. You have the low pressure moving along that gradient, okay, and that's your active storm track. You have an over overrunning precipitation breaking out on either side of that front. South of the front would be rain. North of the front would be, uh, or along it would be ice. North of it would be snow. So that's the idea with overrunning precipitation, okay? We're going to have a little taste of that here Wednesday night, uh, but it's going to be a surge of warm air trying to come in as the ridge tries to come in, and uh, we'll have that precipitation falling in the form of rain but freezing on contact because it's going to be colder and the rain start off to our south so colder anomalies north southeast ridge pumping on this on the southern side of this track and we're going to figure out where this is where this is if it ends up being a little bit further south those storm signals that we have listed in the long range are going to be snow and or ice versus uh having uh versus having rain okay so just don't assume anything that the models are showing going out longer range and we look at the uh, Euro monthlies. This is going to end up being very, very wrong. Uh, it does. This is what they projected ahead for the month of February last month. This doesn't look like it's going to be the pattern that's going to take shape uh, going forward. Doesn't look like it's going to be this cold, at least not in our region. And we've adjusted to above average for the month of February instead of slightly near to slightly below, like they were selling last month. And a lot, a lot of that has to do with the Matajoin oscillation. These are your uh, phases. We're currently in the circle of death, so really there's no influence in the pattern. Uh, in the next week or so while it's in the circle of death. Then it goes into phase four and phase five. Uh, the GFS actually takes us a little bit stronger in a phase five. But if you look at this time of year, in the months of February, March, and April, okay, phase four, phase five do not mean the same thing they did a couple months ago, okay, or even in January. February is kind of like a near to slightly above average period. Uh, same thing here with phase five. Uh, but you can see a semblance of a southeast ridge here on a phase five here, right? But we are on the colder gradient side of that, typically in a phase five. So if we're heading into that pattern, that's not too bad of a pattern. These are not bad patterns like they were uh, in January, okay? So as you head into the La Nina phases uh, on the maritime continent, which is exactly where everything is suggesting we're going to be heading. So this is not a death sentence necessarily. And you can still get uh, systems and big impactful systems. Okay, and when we're in the maritime continent at this time of year. Okay, uh, today we're gonna have a warm front moving through, and uh, on the uh, head of that warm front, you can actually see this on radar right now. We can see some. It's actually uh, the NAM here is actually getting snow pretty far south. I think it's gonna be rain here on the southern periphery, just because it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not cold enough to support any kind of accumulating so closer to seventy eight. But if you get up here in northeast PA, uh, parts of the especially higher elevations, I can see this afternoon and early evening getting some snow showers up in these areas. Fully falling as snow, and if it sticks, it's going to be non paved surfaces, mainly coating to one inch type stuff. With that, so this is on the lead of a ridge, okay. And then uh, we're going to have once that ridge builds in, once we get to the middle of the week, here's that ice. Here's that Wednesday night into Thursday morning ice. 
ahead of the warm front, and then it gets really warm, and this front comes through on Thursday and Friday, okay? Closer view of that, you can see the ice building in here. Uh, this is mainly Wednesday night and Thursday, so this is going to be our next target time frame. And then, of course, this all goes over to rain, but it's still going to be enough that we'll have to send alerts, we'll have to send up maps, things like that, for icing expected during this period. And you can see that right here. This starts on Wednesday night, probably after midnight or so, and it goes right into Thursday morning. You can see that heavy icing there uh, along and north of 78. Actually, maybe a little bit south of 78, at least initially. So we'll watch this very closely. This is a, an interesting time frame for uh, alert-worthy type uh, uh, weather coming at us. And here, it's just a small window where that gradient is a little bit further to the south. And we talk about that gradient here. Uh, let me go back to it. Let me go back to the gradient here. Uh, wherever you're, you are south of this boundary, and it's uh, that, that's true next week too. Now this is going to be surging northward, okay? But you're going to be cold initially before this comes in, before the warm air surges. It's all going to go over to rain at some point, okay, on Thursday. And actually, you know, Thursday might start with freezing rain in the morning. You might have 50s by the time you get to the night uh, before that front moves through. So that's the whole idea behind this, uh, you know, with this warm air advection coming in. You get the icing here Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday night and Thursday. That's not really thread the needle. That uh, well, it is a thread the needle situation, but it's not what people want. Everybody wants a snowstorm. Well, I, I talked about storm signal versus winter storm in the Friday long range outlook, and I wanted to touch the. I'll touch on that here. There are signals going forward, okay, uh, that we listed several going all the way to the twenty second of February. There's four of them. All right. Uh, storm signal indicates a favorable period for storm development. That is it. It does not mean you're going to get a win. There's no guarantee for a direct hit from a storm or winter storm. All right. We had one here on February. Uh, this this storm right now, actually, it, it went offshore yesterday. That was a storm signal listed uh, in our long-range outlet for two weeks. It, alas, it, it, it didn't hit. Okay. We didn't get a direct hit from it, but... Uh, you know, it was still there. There was still a storm, and we were able to recognize that there was a storm there that could threaten the region. All right, so, and that was several weeks in advance, okay? So that's what a storm signal is. It indicates a favorable period for storm development. doesn't necessarily guarantee a direct hit from a storm or winter storm, but it, it could, okay? So track precipitation types and amounts are all variable and are handled on a shorter-term basis, which we did this week with that storm yesterday, okay? So that's... That's the difference between the two. So when I say storm signal, it doesn't mean, oh, wow, he's a four, four storm signals. We're going to hit by four winter storms, and we're going to make up for lost time. No, it doesn't mean that, okay? Although we do have longer-term threats here. This is looking at this morning's GFS, and this is looking at uh, uh, the one of our storm signal periods. We have listed as the 11th and 12th. We have another one, the 14th and 15th. We have another one, uh, the 17th the 22nd period. So we have some storm signals listed there. This is one of them. All right, and this is going to change. You know, don't don't look at this and say, "Oh, well, they're calling for snow here on the 11th and 12th period." Not necessarily. This going to end up. This is another overrunning precipitation event, and it's going to depend on where that gradient boundary sets up that I showed you. We're going to get into that southeast ridge kind of pumping pattern. At the same time, there's going to be days that's going to be really warm. There's going to be days that gradient is further south, and you get a storm coinciding with that at just at the right time, and you can get you can actually get pretty uh, good snowfall out of gradient type snowfalls so it's possible all right so we're going to watch these periods again this one is the 11th and 12th we have another one right around valentine's day or just after 14th 15th time frame and then we have another one here uh you know just beyond that so there's several opportunities going forward as long as you can time it right with that gradient and when i say gradient i mean you know here's your here's your ridge okay and you have colder air on the north side with a high pressure sitting up here you can definitely get uh, snow on the north side of that boundary. Okay, and I think that's kind of the pattern we're heading into. Not a not the greatest pattern in the world, but there is opportunity, and we're not just going to say, "Well, winter's over." And some of you already have, and that's fine. If you want to say, "Oh, well, winter's over," I'm done. Okay, but we still has as a forecasting uh, weather forecasting agency, weather forecasting firm, we have to uh, continue to track all threats regardless if it fits someone's agenda or not. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, temperatures are remain above average in February. We're no doubt about that, but there will be some colder windows. And if you have some colder windows timed perfectly, okay, several storm signals going, exist going forward and must be timed perfectly to produce snow. So this is more of a thread the needle. I wouldn't say it's as much a thread the needle as it is just perfect timing, okay, because you have to time it right when the gradient between the colder air to the north and the warmer air to the south is... Uh, south of the region, so the storm track is south of the region also, and we get on the colder side if you want snow uh, that can still 
occur. And when you have those gradients, when you have the warm and, and cold air gradients running up against each other, uh, it usually produces more in the way of precipitation. So if you look at our, our, our February precipitation projections, we're projecting between an inch and an inch and a half above average in terms of rainfall. So that's a pretty good, you know, if you can get some snow in there, you can definitely, or get it cold enough to snow, you can get some pretty big storms. It's possible. So if February can go boom or bust, that's what we said for the last couple of weeks, but it's not, and it's not the best pattern, but amidst the mild patterns can be some surprises. So we'll be looking for that uh, going forward through this month. Not writing it off, not punting winter. Uh, it could end up being absolutely nothing at all. Okay. Very possible. But uh, we just don't know that yet. Okay, we'll see where that gradient sets up. See if we can get some snow out of it for your snow lovers. And uh, then we'll just kind of track things as they come. So that's it for this week. That's this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 2nd. I'll let you get back to your Super Bowl party preparations. I know we have a lot of you have that going on today. So do I. So uh, I wanted to keep this a little bit shorter than the normal 20 minutes plus video that I do every Sunday. We'll join you again next week and we'll see if we can uh, tackle some more of these signals as they come. But remember that signals does not necessarily mean a storm. Maybe we'll have a storm to track here at that time. Take care.